Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. This is our 19th episode. Feels like we're flying through these. Um, and Vegas Summer League is now officially underway starting on Friday. Um, when Binyama's debut was heavily talked about, <laughs> a lot of opinions. <laughs> um, all the Summer League initial reactions are going to feel like overreactions. So you have to take Summer League with a grain of salt. But Definitely a lot of people popped over the first couple of days. So I got some names, some people that I was I was really impressed with their with their debut. So we're gonna go ahead and get into all that, get into the new in season tournament they got. Um the, the final four is gonna be held in Vegas. Um so that's exciting. Gonna get into all of that. Um the latest with free agency and trade updates. So we're gonna go ahead and get into all of that on this episode of the Off the Glass podcast. <clears throat> but as always, I gotta start with how we doing today, Dan? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Excited. Got to see some good basketball. Um, I'm just excited to talk about it because it's a, it's a lot of stuff that's been going on. A lot of interesting stuff I've been seeing. So I'm ready to talk about it. For sure. I'm going to go ahead and get the housekeeping out of the way. If you are on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you are on any of uh, the audio platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, go ahead and leave a five-star review and pre-download the show to your mobile device. Um, and go ahead and follow the socials below, the TikTok at Off The Glass Podcast and the Instagram at Off The Glass Pod. We just hit 100 followers on the Instagram. And, you know, we've basically been on the social for not even two months at this point. We're already over 400,000 video views. Um, like I said, just hit 100 followers, and we're just getting started. So we appreciate all the support. Continue to to follow both of the social links below. I'm posting shorts content daily, um, and we appreciate all the support as always. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and kick it off with the biggest Summer League debut people have been waiting for since the, the beginning um, of the draft. And, and they always schedule number one versus number two on the first day of summer league. So we had the San Antonio Spurs taking on the Charlotte Hornets. The the game before, which was the the, the Blazers Rockets game, was probably the best game of the day. But that was they, crazy. Even throughout the whole fourth quarter of that game, they just kept showing Wemby in the tunnel, waiting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like they they could not could not wait for him to take the floor. Um, and so he kicks it off to to start. Um, you know, day one of summer league as the the marquee game of the day. Um, <clears throat> the Spurs do end up getting the win. Uh, this is the second time now they beat Charlotte in summer league. They beat them back in the uh, I think it was the California Classic, um, which took place earlier in the week. But no Wemby in that game. Wemby did play in this game, um, and look with this much. <laughs> <laughs> With this much pressure, this many eyeballs, um, <clears throat> this level of expectation, it could only go one of two ways. Right. He either was going to have a great game and people were going to go on crazy victory laps. He's about to be the next GOAT. It was, we're going to overblow it that way. Mm -hmm. He was going to come out and have a stinker, rough game, and they were going to overblow it. He's about to be up. Bus, he can't play in the league. There was gonna be no, there was gonna be no civil discussion. Nah, no, no real no. basketball, <laughs> like no real basketball takes were gonna be had, regardless nah. of how this game went. Unfortunately, he didn't have the best game on the offensive side of the ball. Um, finished the night um, in 27 minutes, <clears throat> two for 14 from the field, one for six from three. Um, look to his credit, never stopped shooting. Um, the jump shot, like it looked good. Um, it's it may have gotten overblown over the last, you know, really the draft process in the last couple of months. You know, he's not going to come in and like be Kevin Durant. <laughs> he's not just going to be a forty percent three point shooter. Mm -hmm. um, it's more the the ability to even have that be a, a somewhat of an arsenal of his his game. Um, so I'm not going to expect him to a ever be a, you know crazy like. Carl Anthony Towns level shooting big. Um, but from a just form perspective, the jumper looked good. The confidence to, to continue to pull looked good. Um, I have to make sure that it said he did have the longest season out of any of these prospects. Um, 
the French, uh, he was in the French league finals that went all the way through um, into June. So when guys were long done with their draft workouts, guys are canceling their draft workouts after they get a promise with the team. Um, he's still playing at the highest level of basketball in France against 30 plus year old grown men um, and, and trying to carry the, the Mets 92 to a championship, um, which he was unable to do. But um, nonetheless, he was playing very, very physical basketball all the way up until about a month ago. Um, and then obviously had to move across the Atlantic Ocean, um, go to New York, fly to San Antonio. So his schedule has probably been very busy. So I want to make sure that we're cutting him adequate sl- slack there because a lot of the people, like I said, who are coming out with these outlandish takes that he's a bust, he looks bad, this is awful, this is, you know, he's never was going to be, you know, what he was hyped up to be. Like, you try to do all that and move across the world in a month, and then let's see your first summer league game. <laughs> yeah. um but but yeah what do you think about Wemby? i think there's still a lot um it from this game in particular to like um and again at the end of the day look it's summer league do you know who the the all-time leading score or, or not the all-time leading score but the the top points in a summer league game all time was what who is it anthony morrow that should tell you everything right <laughs> that, that should, should tell you all you need to know like do summer league Look, it, it's not the end all be all for everybody's career, especially not the first summer league game. Right. Um, should not dictate how you view any of these guys. It's more of an opportunity for them to um, get their first introduction to, to the team, to the system, play with some of maybe the second or third year guys who they may be able to play with on the, the NBA roster. So please, please, please take everything with a grain of salt because some of y'all do not sound like y'all really enjoy basketball. Y'all just like getting y'all's takes off. But Bro, just watch. Like Some people were very happy that that game happened, which is oh, like crazy the, to see. The Britney Spears fans were, they were geeking. They loved bro, it. Bro, time out. Has anyone, ha- I, like, is this the worst start to an NBA career ever? Not just like game aside, just like, bro, the, he comes over. He gets drafted. The Britney Spears stuff. He got a, the security guard slapping, not slapping, her lying, not lying. That stuff happened. Then you get into the summer league game, and you have a terrible game. You get dunked on. You get crossed up or whatever. Like, is that the worst start to an NBA career like from a prospect ever? Like, it's it crazy. has to be. The Britney Spears thing is like, I, bro, when I saw the headline come out, I looked at my. I thought it was fake. It's like I, just I seemed, thought it was like, too. That seems like such a fake article. Like, but my girl sent it to me. I'm like, bro, this is not real. There's no way you're telling me Britney Spears. Like, what is Britney Spears and Wimbing Yama even doing in the same place? Right in the now? same <laughs> in the same sentence. How do right. the two of them even get in the same sentence? It's <laughs> bro, crazy. And, and like, bro, I don't even think he knows who that is. I'm being honest with you. I, he's 19. He's from France. There's no chance he knows who he knows who Britney Spears is. Even if he does, like, he made it clear. He was like. Bro, I had no idea that's who it was. Like, he was instructed by security. He was like, when we're walking through anywhere, like, it's going to be a lot of people calling your name. He mm-hmm. was like, even if you want to stop, take pictures for the fans, whatever. He's like, we can't do that because it's just going to create a big crowd and it's going to be a mess. So just, like, walk straight, look forward. Do not, you know, stop for anybody. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I hear somebody calling me, Victor, Victor. And I felt somebody touch me on my back. And then, like, I saw security kind of jump over. He's like, I hadn't, I didn't, I had no idea who it was. He said he didn't even find out until his phone was blowing up after the TMZ story broke that it was Britney Spears. Like, he, bro, he had all he's trying to do is just walk to his dinner. <laughs> like, now, now you got the Britney Spears fans on his head watching summer league games. That's so crazy. That's, 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 that's I don't so know crazy. if that speaks more to like Britney Spears, like, stands. I don't know, like they're, they're crazy. I don't even know what do you call it. Like that's like I don't know. It's weird. Obs- that's it's what obsessive. It is. It's like, weird. You know? It's weird. That's what it is. It's weird. But y'all, a lot of y'all probably <laughs> never watched basketball in y'all's life, and y'all went out of your way to go look up summer league highlights of this guy. <laughs> what? That's that so crazy. crazy. Yeah, they're gonna be uh, rivals for years to come. That's gonna be the next NBA rivalry: Victor, Women Yama versus Britney Spears. That, like, wow! That's I know crazy. we reacted to that that uh, the cut up of the the last season funniest moments. It's like this is we've now started <laughs> right <laughs> for, for the 2023 2024 season. Facts. Britney Spears assaulted by Wimbenyama security. 
Like, what is going on? Bro, this world is crazy, bro. He ain't been he been in the country for like a two weeks at that point. Bro's already in the scandal. Like, bro, what is happening? But regardless, all that stuff aside, um, obviously his his debut wasn't great. Um, mm -hmm. I, like you said, he did some things that impressed me. Like, I thought his passing was really really good. Like, I thought yeah. his passing was really was really good. I know he lost the ball a lot of times, but I still think for someone his size, his handle really showed that. Like, his handles on a, another level. For someone of that size, so right. um, my main problem is just the fact that he looked off balance a lot. Like mm -hmm, even did. when he was back, even when he was backing smaller players down, when he was driving to the basket, it looked like he just lost his footing a lot. Um, he fell a lot of times. Like, he looked, he just looked like he was really, really, really off balance. So I don't really know what to make of that. Maybe it's just his small frame. Like he's a skinny person. Maybe it's just the fact that he's getting pushed off the spot so much. Um, but that really stuck out to me. Obviously. The shot not falling. But me personally, even when it came to Brandon Miller or any one of these prospects, the shot not falling is not really a concern to me. Right. Like, for any of these guys. Like, that could happen to anyone. Like, the same, the same, someone who can drop 30 in the summer league and hit and all their threes, hitting all their shots, can go out there and miss everything. I'm not, I'm really not worried about the shot, especially this early in their career. So that's not really a concern to me. But the problem was, like I said, him losing the ball and losing him, his balance a lot. And just I don't know, around the rim, I felt like he would have, like he would have better success around the rim, considering a lot of those guys in summer league, like he was on smaller players a lot. Like there was a time that he was like Brandon Miller was guarding him, mm -hmm. and he just seemed like he kind of couldn't back him down. So I just think obviously you know he needs to get stronger, but I mean that's something that we knew coming right. into the league. Like eventually he's gonna get, he's gonna have to get stronger. So mm -hmm. um, that's a little bit of a concern, but. Again, I'm not too worried. It's the first game of summer league, but like we've said plenty and plenty of times, it does not matter if he comes out here and his offensive game, even if his offensive game is non-existent, which I don't think it will be in his rookie year, he will be an elite defensive player right. at worst. Like that's why that's why I've always said he's bust proof because he can give you nothing offensively and lead your team to the number one defense in the league because there's he's erasing shots at the basket. Like he's not like you're not gonna be able to go to the basket on him. So, and if you pair him with an actual like center who can bang down there, he could be like a help like a weak side rim protector. It's gonna be elite. The the rim protection is gonna be elite. So, like we said, the defense stuck out, but we knew that was gonna happen. And his offensive game is just a little bit more raw than a lot of people thought it was gonna be this early. Yeah, I like that. I like that bust proof. I don't think I ever heard that one before. But uh, now listen, man, I'm about to trademark it. I ain't, I ain't here for either. I'm about to trademark it. <laughs> I like that, but but I agree, right? That we talked about it because at worst, who who was it? It might have been uh, Chris Broussard or one of those guys on Fox Sports saying it's like his his floor is like AD yeah. as a defender, and it's like if that's your floor. Like that's worst case scenario. You're you arguably are. the best and, defender in the league, <laughs> right? You, you can't be a bust. There's just no way. Right. Um, and that was still on display in this game, despite the struggles on the offensive end. Um, five blocks in this game. Um, additionally, you saw him able to switch out onto smaller guys. There's a lot of times in the game where he was guarding Brandon Miller. Mm -hmm. um, I think he, he blocked a Brandon Miller three-point attempt, which he done. He actually did a ton in France. If you watch a lot of his film, um, he blocked a ton, a ton of three-pointers. That's just going to – it's going to translate. That's going to happen in the league a lot. That's going to happen a lot, yeah. Right. It's just you think you have the space to get a shot over a guy, and it's like, never mind. Here's a 7'5 mm -hmm. freak leaping at me from out the paint. Um, so th that'll happen a ton. The, the defense is going to be legit from day one. It's evident in this game. Five blocks in 27 minutes is nothing to scoff at. That is a mm -hmm. lot. And imagine if he played, you know, looking at like per 36 stats, you'd be looking at like seven, eight blocks almost. Right. Um, and so, look, like you said, I agree. The the balance was tough. Um, it definitely seemed like anytime he was driving or getting the ball in, in the post, the Hornets were sending extra bodies at him, um, which made it difficult for him to get to really anything in his bag. They were trying to, to dribble through. There's a lot of times where um, the handle got a little sloppy with the added pressure. Um, who wasn't really able to make a lot of great post moves. Again, I think some of that does come with just the strength aspect, which doesn't necessarily mean he's going to get a ton bigger, but he does have to have a higher base level of strength not mm -hmm. to be able to not be kind of thrown around on the block a little bit or just as easily displaced um, from what he's looking to do. So, you know, that'll just come with time. You do have to be patient. Uh, but 
look, baseline minimum, like you said, the handles and space for a guy his size is like he's putting it between his legs, he's bringing the ball up the court. Like he's doing a lot of things for a guy his size we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. um, and then additionally, the passing looked good. Um, which is exactly what you're going to need in a you know San Antonio Spur offense, making that extra pass, turning good shots to great shots. So, um, you know, it was a very unselfish player, um, you know, with his time with the Mets 92 in France. So um, see that very early on as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to take too, too much stock in the, you know, the offensive performance. Like I said, I think the confidence and the, the fluidity of the jumper and his, um, ability to kind of play on the perimeter on the offensive side of the ball. Like all of that still look good. The shot will fall at some point. I would not be surprised if he has, a, you know, if he plays one or two more games here at the summer league and they shut him down. And maybe he has one game where he, you know, has a 25 plus point game. Hopefully that quiets all the, the ridiculous takes about him being a bust already. Cause again, it's summer <laughs> league. Like you do not need to put this much stock into those games. Um, and he's like, bro, he has all the pressure in the world. Like, like Doris Burke said his name at least 50 times. Oh, yeah. He had to. Between, even before he was playing, like you said, and in the game, bro, at least 50 times they said his name. In the fourth quarter of the Blazers-Rockets game, it felt like they said Wemby more than they said Amen Thompson or School Henderson. School Henderson. Anybody. Jabari Smith is cooking. He has like 30 <laughs> right now. And then like, Wimby, look how tall he is. Every time, every time, every time it's a dead boy, they got the camera <clears throat> like this. Look, right. at him. Yeah. Like, look how tall he is compared to everyone else. Oh my God. The anticipated debut. Everyone's here for like I get it. Calm down. And I, I do feel like a lot of people are putting way too much pressure on this kid. But um, I mean, it's when you're that good of a prospect, it happens. And I all the time I just think I just think it's not fair to put that much pressure on a 19 year old kid like i wasn't born obviously well i was born but uh I, like, I wasn't like conscious enough to like really see what was going on when lebron was getting um all that hype and stuff but mm. like back then i felt like it was way too much pressure like that's way too much pressure to put yeah, on somebody yeah. like that's insane so to come out here and have a bad game like bro he has all the pressure in the world on him bro like he's still you still seen like that he has the tools to do a lot of things offensively elite like Yes, the jump shot wasn't falling, but the jump shot looks good. Yes, he lost the ball with his handle, but the handle looks good. I understand yeah. he's like got pushed around a little bit in the post, but like that's something you can you can get stronger and you can work on those things. Like he has all the tools. You just have to refine that offensive game a little bit. And like we said, at worst case scenario, the defense will always be elite. Right. And so for the people who are coming out with these crazy takes, you know, saying he's a bust, saying it's not going to work, saying there were people that were like seeing the passing and was like, this ain't nothing we never seen before. This is like, bro, I'm, I'm swear some of y'all really do not like watching basketball. Like y'all just live for hot takes. Y'all live for arguments and debates. Like y'all just never, I don't ever just sit down and like enjoy something. Just because chill. Everything, watch is viewed from like, everything is viewed from like this the debate shows the legacy talk all that type of stuff that's the same thing i don't getting a little bit off track but that's the same thing you know how um carmelo anthony Sutton was talking about paul george is like the greatest player ever yeah. and like when you hear that it sounds like ridiculous but like so i forgot who said it but somebody was like really like bro when you're a kid and you're just watching basketball you just like if you like somebody you like their game you're just watching basketball you're not thinking of like he didn't right. do this he didn't do that he lost to this guy and this and like he's this and this in the finals like you just you're just watching basketball, like right, and that's what I feel like. A lot of people don't do. A lot of people just don't sit back and like watch the game. They just look at it from a how does this affect this? How does this affect that? Everything is so legacy this, legacy that, bro. We don't need to get into. This is first some. Can he even? Can he get to the league? Like can he play <laughs> actual game? First? He's not even in the league. He didn't even play a real NBA game, bro. I, Come on, man. We need to retire the, like, LeBron-level expectations forever. Like, how do we go through a whole career and it's like, cool, this guy was on the cover of Sports Illustrated as a junior and was dubbed the chosen one before he even got drafted? That was insane. It's like, all right, crazy. It's like, cool, he lives up to that expectation. We should have never set that expectation. I'm saying we, but, like, the mm -hmm. media should have never set that expectation in the first place. Exactly. So why are we doing this again? And I know that's never going to change because they're always going to do it. 
but like it doesn't benefit anybody like no one gets benefited from having these crazy lofty expectations because it's almost impossible to hit them and it just gives leverage for people to like nick you on your legacy bro she's like why are we even why are we even trying to set him up for legacy anything this is summer league like bro this is just, we shouldn't even be thinking about this thinking like like the people saying that like like when chris was are saying that like if he's anthony davis he's a bust like that is such an unrealistic like standard bro that's crazy that's so it's like if he's not top five all the time he's a bust Oh, is that what you're telling me? If he's not top 10 all right. time, you know how hard it is to do. Like that's not, it's not easy to do. Like that's not a fair expectation to have for somebody, especially somebody that's 19. Bro, he's a kid. I, bro, that doesn't make sense, bro. I don't get it. Yeah, it just it doesn't make sense. Does not make sense at all. And I think I know we talked about it before. Like "bust" as a term gets way too overused in the media space because, like, if if that to you, if he's a bust for not becoming a top 10 player all the time, like, what does that really say about any number one overall pick? Like, if they don't become a, a franchise superstar, right. like, are they a bust? Is Wiggins a bust? I don't think Wiggins is a bust. Like, people are probably already saying Zion's a bust just off of injuries. But it's like, A, it's like, bro, the story isn't even done on these guys yet. And it's like, mm -hmm. injuries are out of people's control. It's just, it's so much that factors into all this, like, these are not discussions that need to be had right now. So look, at the end of the day, yes, the offense looked rough. No, I'm not caring that much about it. It's the first game of summer league. The defense translated like expected. So at absolute worst, even if his offense never grows to you know the level that people think that it can, or if it never you know reaches the heights that um, it was projected to, he's going to be an elite, elite, elite rim protector. And mm -hmm. that can get you three DPOYs, multiple all-star teams, multiple all-NBAs from another French big man who, to mm -hmm. many, is not that good. Hey, man. Um, but love him or hate him, it's only so many people with three or more defensive player of the years. And Rudy Gobert has to be in that conversation. So at minimum, um, you will be one of the best players in the league. You will get... A hundred plus, two hundred plus million dollar mil. contracts, and that is that. So, look, I'm I'm not pressed about Wimby or his summer league debut. Um, and flipping over to the other side of things, same reasoning. I'm not super super pressed with Brandon Miller's summer league so far, which again has not been the greatest. He had, I think, like almost 16 fouls in the first two games in the California Classic. That's kind of um, crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think in the, the second game, he had eight fouls and six points. Uh, again, the, the cap to foul out in Summer League is 10, so he he was in foul trouble in Summer League. Being in foul trouble in Summer League is kind of crazy. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> you get 10 fouls and you're in foul trouble? That's kind of wild. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the, the shot has been real streaky, real spotty. He kind of got it going in the, the very first, you know, game of the California Classic. He knocked down, I think, three threes in the fourth quarter when that game was um, pretty much over. They were getting blown out by the, the Spurs Summer League team there. Um, in this game on Friday, in the first game of, of, of their Vegas Summer League run, um, he finishes up with 16 points, 11 rebounds. He did get three steals and a block, two. Um, again, not the greatest shooting night for him. Five of 15 from the field, three of 10 from the three point line. Um, I think a lot of that may also just have to do with like, there's not a point guard on this, this Hornets roster. And like the they starting don't set back court, nothing, right? Like he's playing with, you know, Nick Smith Jr. And James book Knight, who are both looking to get their own shots off. And so it's like, there's not really anyone to kind of facilitate or make his life easy as a, you know, uh, stretch shooter, which is what he is, is a six nine, you know, catch and shoot guy. Um, so like that needs to be taken into consideration as well. Um, so like, I'm I'm not concerned. I think what what can you take away? Like good. Um, 
He's not, you know, getting reluctant to shoot. He's going to continue to shoot. The shot will fall at some point. Like, he's a very good three-point shooter. He's a very good, you know, floor spacer. Um, so that will come with time. And then it will make a big difference when your you're starting guard is LaMelo Ball and not James Booknight, who, look, for him, this is your third season. A uh, little bit different standards in summer league for – Third year guys, guys who it's like, okay, this is your second or third summer league. You have to, it's not the same as the rookies, right? Like, you should have graduated. You have to perform here because Mm -hmm. that starts to feel like the make or break for your stint with the team. And then we start to get to make or break for your time in the league. Um, Because if you can't get it, you can't get it right in summer league, it's not going to bode well for you getting into you know, trying to find any type of role once, you know, the regular season comes around. Mm-hmm. And so book night has not shot it well um, in California or here in Vegas as well. This game, he went six for 18, two of 10 from three. Um, again, he's not a traditional point guard. So same issue as Miller. Like there's no, the offense does not have a great rhythm or flow to it. There's no facilitator on the court. Um, so that's not helping him there, but uh, look, it, He's got to he's got to step it up here in the the next couple of games here over summer league, and he's got to put a couple of decent performances on the board um, because yeah. it is uh it's reaching that point in his career where he's got to make some shake. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Brandon Miller. Yeah, I just think the win. The main thing that concerns me: why are you fouling so much, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like what? like that part I just don't get. Why are you hacking so much? Like eight fouls in a game is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that I mean, it is what it is. I highly doubt. Maybe he's just fouling because he's like, I got ten of them. Like let me let me just use them. I got ten because like I highly doubt he's gonna come in the league as a guard and like be in foul trouble every night. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. That's normally like a big man problem. Like I, mm-hmm. I doubt he's gonna be in foul trouble every night. But um, like I said, it's tough because he is a like he's a shooter and. At first, I was I was wondering why they kept saying like giving him the 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 slack of like oh when he gets with Lamelo when he gets with Lamelo and I thought initially I thought like oh you're number number two overall pick like you should be able to create for yourself mm-hmm. you should be able to outshine these guys out here but like I said I thought about it and I'm like that's not really his game you know he is right. a shooter and it's it's tough because he got drafted so high and when normally when people get drafted so high you look at it from a standpoint of you can be the guy like you know what i mean like you don't need nobody to set you up you don't need no, nobody to facilitate for you but i mean that's just the reality of his game you know what i mean he will i feel like he will play very very well once he actually gets into like regular season and plays alongside Lamelo. i feel like he actually will play very very well so it's just tough like you said they don't have a point guard that can set him up and that's not really his game so he just he it, it looks rough out there for him i'm not gonna lie but the main things obviously the foul stuff that's to the side, but I I feel like he has the same problem as Wimby a little bit, mm-hmm. in in the terms of he needs to get a lot stronger because he can get pushed off the spot so easily yeah. when he drives to the basket. It's tough and it's hard for him to to finish around the rim because he a lot of times when he drives to the basket he's a little bit off balance, so it's tough for him to finish around the rim. So, but that again that's a thing that a lot of rookies deal with when you first come into the league. You see all the pictures, like you see the Giannis thing. He came into the league, he was like a, a skinny twig, and now he's like jacked. So that stuff, again, that's just stuff you can work on. That stuff that just comes with time. So there's nothing that jumps out at me that's like Brandon Miller's a bust. Like he's mm-hmm. Brandon Miller's a bust. I still think Scoot should win number two, and I think we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. But yep. I think with Wimby, with Brandon Miller, I feel like people are overreacting a little bit. Yeah, like hundred percent. The he, him being the complimentary type piece to LaMelo, you have to think about that. Like, he's not going to be at the level of shot creation like someone that Scoot would have for him. Mm-hmm. So, um, so he's kind of at the mercy of this Hornets summer league roster in terms of, you know, shot creation and, and facilitation. And that is lacking um, on this roster for sure. I think his, like you mentioned, you know, his ability to finish at the rim um, I feel like his touch definitely needs some work. Um, it just feels like he's able to even, even when he does get to a decent spot to finish, um, the touch doesn't seem all the way there yet. Um, but again, I'm not not taking too much stock into it. Um, so so not not great showings from him so far in summer league, but you know, we'll, we'll really see what he looks like once the season rolls around. He gets some, 
some reps in with, with LaMelo and the, the NBA roster there. But before we fully move off of this game, um, shout out Kai Jones. You are officially – there's a lot of people that already said they want to dunk on Wemby. You are officially the first guy. Who would have thought? To put Wemby on a poster. And it was a nice little poster, a little lob. Like, it was crazy. It made me jump out my seat when I he, seen that. He punched it on him. He yeah. punched it on him. John um, Morant punching the air right now. I know he wanted to be first. You know he was going to try some, Bro, John Morant might have – matter of fact, I'm glad Kai Jones did it. John Morant probably would have hurt himself trying to dunk on Wemby, bro. Yeah. Like he would have came <laughs> cocked back. Like he would have tried he something. He probably would have jumped over him, you know, Vince Carter style. Right. Like <laughs> well, something be crazy. crazy. That would be uh, insane. And granted, like watching it back a couple times, like they had legit committed to switch on in the Spurs. Like Wimby is switched onto a ball handle and pick and roll. So just low key, the fact that he even got back to contest the lob is like again, it's like Yeah, it's crazy. That, you know that's impressive. You know what made when I watched it too in real time. Oh actually no, not the real time. When I watched the, the replay back, mm-hmm. it made me look at and I always thought this that this block was in super impressive, like either first or second greatest block in finals history, it made me look at Giannis's, Giannis's block G. and was like, bro, that is such a crazy play that he really recovered and blocked that. Because yeah. that's not easy at all to, right. like, step up on the ball handler and get back and block the lob, not just mm-hmm. contest it, like, and actually block the lob. That is an insane athletic play. Right. 99% of bigs, like, off the switch, the lob is thrown, that's it. Play is yeah. over. Yeah, so, you're done. The fact that Wemby was able to get there and, like, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, bro, as a rim protector, like, you're going to get banged on. Like, yeah, they just have Jared, Jared Allen has gone banged on. LeBron's gone banged on. Mm-hmm. Jacopo's gone Anthony banged Anthony Davis. On. AD, like, every rim protector you get, you're going to get a punch on your head. That's how mm-hmm. it works. Uh, but the, the fact that he was able to get back, you know, to the spot, and, like, that was not an easy dunk for Kai Jones to finish. He's just crazy athletic. So mm-hmm. props to him. And like you said, it did make me think about Giannis's recovery because the fact that he was able to see the lob coming, he's got he's probably about what eight and it's probably two, three feet behind him at that point, mm-hmm. and able to recover and stuff the lob is. If we never had blocked by James, that would be the best block in Finals history, at least in like the last twenty years. I can't speak to anything you know really further before that, but I guarantee you they wasn't blocking nothing like that. I don't. I didn't see. I have no proof. I can just. I just know they wasn't blocking nothing like that. That you is probably would have got clothesline. <laughs> mm. Probably yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I know for a fact though that's probably blocked by James is probably the best block as far as like situation moment. Like it's just so iconic. But yeah. as far as like difficulty, that has to be the best block in finals history. Yeah, yeah. Because the chase down is great. Like that's an effort thing. This is mm-hmm. like I don't care how hard. A lot of y'all try. Y'all just are not going to be able to cover that kind of ground that Giannis did. Facts. So, yeah, that's where my mind went for sure. Um, but, yeah, shout out Kai Jones. <clears throat> you put it on his head. <laughs> he need to make that a T-shirt. Because, bro, if Wimby actually turns out to be like the, oh, what he's projected to be, this great all-time great player, right. he get to say, yo, I was the first guy to dunk on him. Like, right. and like really, really posterize him. So, you yeah. need to put that in a T-shirt. Um, then that would be hard. That would be hard on a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, moving over to the the game that we alluded to, I think the best game on uh on Friday, um, which was Hornets or not Hornets, uh, Blazers Rockets, um, where we got to see the number three and number four picks match up against each other, and um, it did not disappoint from the, the from the jump. <laughs> Both of these guys, uh, Scoot Henderson and Men Thompson, they are both the real deal. They are both the real deal. You can see the level of poise and comfortability from both of them in terms of just having the ball in their hands, commanding the offense. Watching just the plays that uh, Men made, like the passes that he was making, um, some of the finishes he was getting off, um, the jumper looked good, which is again like the biggest question mm-hmm. mark for both the Thompson twins. Um, he was knocking down some jump shots. Um, he took one three, he knocked it down, he took it smooth. Um, 
finished the game with uh you know 16 points five assists he had three steals and four blocks like the length as a defender is huge his motor and just I said already, the feel for the game at such a young age is so evident when you watch him. Some of the pack, I'm watching him try to hit some of these rollers, and it's like they aren't even ready. And it's like, bro, at the we get a legitimate NBA roster around him. These yeah. are these are easy driving dishes. These are lobs. Like, just this is summer league. <laughs> Not everybody yeah. is to that level. And so he honestly could have had, you know, three, four more assists. Um, I said people just weren't ready for for some of the passes he was giving out. Uh, that bounce pass he had on the, the baseline where he was kind of cutting through, I think the ball kind of mm-hmm. like fell out to him, and he hit kind of a little hezzy dribble, got into the lane, and then like did a little glance, and then just kind of threw the bounce pass between you know two people to the roller. It was like, bro, you you got that Steve Nash, you know yeah. Chris Paul like eyes in the back of your head, three sixty mm-hmm. camera view of the court at all times feel. So I was really impressed with him. Um, and the same thing with Scoot on, on the other side of the ball. Um, he finished with 15 points um, before he got unfortunately hurt. I think it was a shoulder in that game. Um, but the athleticism pops, the feel for the game pops. He is, as advertised, like is going to be a franchise point guard. And with Dame hopefully on the move very soon, like I don't think the Trailblazers could have asked for a better rebuilding piece with him. Shane Sharp and Anthony Simons if they decide to keep him as well. And so, look, they are in a, a fantastic spot. No, <clears> hundred percent. <throat> um, because the Scoot's already become one of my favorite players in the league, bro. He ain't even played a regular game yet. Listen, Scoot is just. I'm not big into like he got that dog in him type thing because people use that and like to people use that to discredit people. Mm-hmm. But he got that dog, bro. Scoot is like that, bro. Yeah. Scoot was going. At it, he was talking to he's talking to Amen. He was talking crazy after a couple buckets. So like he just looked like um and I think it's a credit to the G League Unite, the fact that mm-hmm. he was in that league playing against other grown men. He just looks like a grown man out there. He looked like an NBA player out there. Him, I mean did too. He definitely looked like an like a NBA ready player. But yeah, Scoot looked like he looked like I shouldn't be here already. Like he looked like I'm too good for this already. Like he looked Bigger than a lot of people out there. Like he was guarding a man who's I think what six 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 seven six seven yeah six seven school six one, and still able to guard him just because he's so strong. You know what I mean? His body is NBA ready. Um, his shot was falling early. I think he started the game like four for four or five for five something like that. Mm-hmm. The touch around the rim was insane. Um, the pace that he played with, being able to like uh, play at his own pace, have that change of pace, be so quick and dynamic and like fast break scenarios like. He's going to be amazing. Like, he looked like, as much as I was saying, don't overreact to Brandon Miller, I he I think he's going to be a solid player. But I think Scoot is going to be a different player. I think he has, like, superstar potential easily. Like, I, I, if I had to bet on one of those two guys, I would bet on Scoot being the better player. So that's why mm-hmm. I feel like he should have went number two. But, listen, Portland, they got they they got their point guard of the future. Like, I, I'm glad he fell because, again, we get to see Dame on a different team, hopefully. But the Portland's gonna be fine. Like they got their point guard of the future, so that was great to see. Um, as far as I'm in, I think he just looked, like you said, so poised and just right. like so in control. Like he wasn't rushing anything. Like he he was able to drive to the basket. His touch around the around the rim is also insane. Then one where he got the and one with his left hand and had the spin on the ball. That's bro. That's crazy. There was one that he missed. Where he kind of like came through, he took he took off like outside oh, of the lane, about. right? Yeah. He kind of came under uh, and yeah. then like tried to put some English like jelly it onto the. It mm-hmm. was like, how did you even get that close to the rim? Like it looked like he right. took off way too early and he just hung in the air for like an extra second. And was able exactly. To, get it off. to yeah, to even get that off is ridiculous. So, um, the thing that stood out to me is the fact that one, he's like huge. Like he looked ridiculously tall like i get it, he's six seven but like i think it's just because he's handles the ball and he's a point guard yeah like he looks huge out there like it was crazy to see but um i like the fact that i think you said this before his problem is his shooting ability but he has all of the tools athletically and just i feel like his mental game is really good mm-hmm. as far as being able to like stay under control play at his own pace that his one weakness being shooting 
I'm fine with that because that's something you can work on. That's something you can right. learn. That's something you can improve. You can't you can, you can't teach the athleticism. You can't teach um, the vision that he has. Like he just looks like he's gonna be a great player once he like actually gets into the league and improves on that shot. Like he's gonna be a force. So yeah, it was a really good game. The game was like insane to watch. Definitely the best game of Friday. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, definitely get well soon to to Scoot, who has a shoulder injury. And then, unfortunately, uh, Amen Thompson did sprain his ankle there in the – I think it was the fourth quarter of that game, early in the mm-hmm. fourth. Um, so he is done for summer league, I'd imagine. I think they said it's two weeks at minimum. So that yeah, pretty much no pushes point. it all the way to the end. And it's like, why even why, – why risk it at that point? No point. Um, so, unfortunately, that is all we're going to see from, from Amen Thompson summer league. But look, I'm very, very impressed – excited for the rocket season fred bro talking to you freddie <laughs> on that starting pg spot because the man has got a level of poise that i think is well above his years um hopefully scoop may be able to come back i don't we didn't really get too much information on how severe the the shoulder injury is um so so hopefully he's all good there he's not playing today i heard yeah he's not gonna be playing against one b which is tough which yeah. look more shots for Shaden. He was hooping. I want to see Shaden and Wemby at the rim. Let me see that. <laughs> yeah, he was. I mean, Tari Eason stuffed Shaden, though. He you did. see that? He, he tried to rise up on him. Tari Eason stuffed that. So, um, it, I want, one last thing I do want to say about him, man. Um, it made me glad that they didn't get James Harden, though, like watching him play because yeah. he would have absolutely hindered the development of these young guys, which I 100%. just don't want that to happen. Like, we know what James Harden is, and you're going there just to – Right out your career, like no, I'd rather let the young guys play and develop. So, um, I think Fred has a. I think with the money that he got, I think he has the starting job locked up for it this year. I think it's locked up, but after this year, I, I don't know. I don't know, Freddie. I don't we get know. To January, February, men averaging like for me coming off the bench, putting up like eleven and seven. I don't know. You will get the Rockets fans that will be chirping. Like, yo, listen, we need to give him in the keys. And I'm not yeah. a Rockets fan, but I might be one of those people chirping. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, look, either way, even if he is coming off the bench, like, it, he's going to get lots of opportunities, lots of minutes to develop. And so I'm I'm excited for that. Um, you mentioned Tari Eason. I think he's going to have, like, this is a great opportunity for him with Eme there. He's about mm-hmm. to really get unleashed this year. Right. Uh, really liked what I saw from him in this game. Shot was falling for him. He had four blocks, too, um, with, with 10 rebounds as well, five assists. He just is great, great wing defender. Like, teams would love to have a guy like Tari Eason on their roster. Um, and Jabari Smith, he started off the game early. People were kind of on his head on, on Twitter, you know, especially mm-hmm. at halftime. Like, look, bro, you're a second-year player, and you're looking kind of passive in a summer league yeah. game. You should be taking over. And I don't know if he checked Twitter at halftime. <laughs> yeah, right. He, he came out <laughs> in the second half. Guns fire and he ended up getting to the free throw line had 17 free throw attempts um and then of course speaking of the both of them 0.6 seconds left on the clock the blazers just i don't know didn't want to dribble the clock out through an alley-oop <laughs> gave, yeah, gave the rockets the ball back with, with, with 0.6 seconds left and tari Eason threw a little perfect like touch pass that went right over chris murray who just making a young rookie decision to to kind of front him up in that position. Yeah. Jabari caught it over his head and got it up in about 0.5 seconds and drilled the game winning three. Um, you know, similar to how he did in the uh when they played the Pelicans late down the stretch mm-hmm. um in, in the regular season. So he ends up finishing the game three of eight from three, eight of eighteen from the field with thirty three points um to go along with a block and seven rebounds as well. So very good uh, start to summer league for Jabari Smith, who who also, you know, people question, you know, maybe why he might be playing in summer league. Because there are some other, you know, second year guys who aren't playing, some guys who I think could potentially benefit from playing in summer league, like Zaire Williams, who are, who are not playing in summer league. And he said, look, we won 22 games last year. And a lot of these guys on this roster are going to be key players for us this upcoming season. Like, I, I need to play in summer league. I love to hear that. Right. I respect that mentality from him. Rockets fans, like, that's what you would love to hear. So, I I like this Rockets team. They really might have my favorite young core 
if not, they're they're easily up there in the top three um, in the league. So really excited to watch them the rest of the summer league. Um, again, it's unfortunate what happened to him and Thompson, but still going to want to continue to see, um, you know, Cam Whitmore, who, who struggled to shoot in that game, but, but the athleticism is there. Um, the shot will definitely fall. He's one of the better shooters in this draft class. Um, so excited to continue to see that with Tari and Jabari uh, Smith as well. Um, yeah, uh, uh, that was definitely the game of the day. <laughs> it felt like the last two minutes of that game took like 25 minutes. It just would not right. would not end. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was kind of crazy. It felt like it was dragging forever. But, nah, it was a really good game, though, 100%. I'm glad to see Jabari Smith pick it up because it was looking scary. I'm not going to lie. It was looking a little rough, but... Um, I don't know why people. Honestly, I don't know why people questioning him. Why is he playing? Like, he didn't have like a outstanding rookie year to where he yeah. should shouldn't be playing. Like, I feel like there's a. If you're a second year player, most you should at least play one. But like, once you show that, like, nah, you're way too good for this. Then right. all right, we can get you out of there. Like Jalen, like J Dub. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like you, you get out of here, bro. Keegan Murray. That's one. If people were saying w- w- someone shouldn't be playing, it should have been him just because the fact that he played, he was a starter, starter in, the in the playoff playoffs, series on the against the defending seed. champs, exact on a three seed. That's the one guy where I'm like, all right, why is he even suiting up in the first place? Right. Other than that, bro, y'all can play. You're not good. Enough. Y'all not too good to play. But I, look, I love what I saw from Keegan Murray, bro. In the yeah. California Summer League, they letting him bring like. Getting some some ball handling reps. He's running the pick and roll. They're letting him get some touches on the on the block and kind of work out of the post. I'm seeing James Harden double step back threes. <laughs> he, he he punching it on people like he's doing everything. That's what I love about summer league is you get to see guys who kind of have their set carved out role and they kind of take the training wheels off of them for a couple games and just let them hoop. Right. And you can see, bro. You, it reminds you very quickly that a lot of these guys could do so much more than their role if they weren't playing against top level NBA talent night in night out. If you, you threw any NBA player into a lifetime fitness run, they are scoring all twenty one points. It doesn't matter every who game. guarding them. They mm-hmm. doing every. You could have Mitchell Robinson out there. He gonna hit you with a step back tween hezzy three. He you would see never see clips. him do that, right? He looked like a demigod out yeah. there, bro. Was looking great, bro. I thought it was fake. I'm like, there's no way that's Mitchell Robinson. Like, I know NBA <laughs> I players too, do that. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way that's Mitchell Robinson. He was, <laughs> he was he, hooping. Yeah, he was going crazy. Um, I got a couple guys here that I also want to want to make sure that we touch on as well. Uh, first guy, gotta make sure I I give him his props because that is again, I'm gonna always stick on it. My steal of the draft. <laughs> Leonard Miller. Um, he actually played in the very first game of Vegas Summer League on Friday. Um, and he finished up the game with 16 points, 7 of 11 from the field, 2 of 4 from 3. Um, I know the shot was, you know, not as highly touted, but uh, the form probably will get tweaked a little bit. I think it's a little bit unorthodox. Uh, but the, the release point is good, good art. Um, obviously, being at 6'10, it's going to be a tough contest for anybody. Um, but Look comfortable for him, knock down two of those threes. Um, but what really popped for me on, on on you know this summer league debut for him was was that activity. Um, had 11 rebounds. Um, he had five offensive rebounds. Um, and he was very very comfortable on the offensive glass, bringing the ball down and getting to a new spot. So that's you know if he's really close to the rim, power dribble, get to the other side of the rim. If it's a long rebound you know, dribbling, kind of creating, getting back to the rim, which goes back to some of that self-creation that he flashed at times in the G League. Um, So I really liked his game. The defensive side of the ball, again, 6'10", lengthy defender. He had two steals and a block, and that block was on a three-point shot, um, which really closed out the game, blocked EJ Liddell's three, um, and then grabbed his rebound, easily dunked it. So I really, really liked what I saw from – from Leonard Miller, I think that he's going to fit in so nicely um, with Rudy, with Cat, if they keep him, with Anthony Edwards. Um, he's just going to be a really nice wing piece for them. Um, him and McDaniels on the wing, like 6'9", six, 6'10", six, switchable so defenders. Can everything. Very comfortably guard one through four. Comfortably guard one through four. Um, so I really, really liked what I saw from him. In that game, you got uh, anybody over the first two days of summer league that really popped for you? Come on, man. 
Come on, man. You know, you know my fandom. My man Max Christie was was been hoping. He's been hoping. He's looking like he's about to graduate summer league. So, nah, he's been going crazy though. So, uh, so shout he's out been, to him. He's been punching it on people. Did, did you seen that, bro? Bro, he's out he here. Got like that. Bro, he's out here dunking. He's out here handling the ball, the shot mm -hmm. creation. Like he's being efficient. I think I don't know if I I seen the split right. I forgot what it was. It was like something. He's shooting something ridiculous right now. Like it's mm -hmm. crazy efficient right now. So Max Christie is one of those guys that has been hooping. And if you're a Lakers fan and if you're on Twitter, you know that they treat Max Christie like he's the next Kobe Bryant. They do. And I didn't know a lot about Max Christie. Um. Basically, because he doesn't really get a lot of minutes in the regular season, and the last summer league, I don't think he really did much. So, but this summer league, you you could definitely see the improvement. So, shout out to him. Um, another guy that I actually like, someone who, like I said, I don't really watch a lot of college basketball or just non NBA basketball in general. So when I see the summer league and I just see guys who got drafted like pretty high, it's like interesting to see how they perform. Mm -hmm. And one guy that actually like caught my eye a little bit was Anthony Black. Like, oh yeah. He, we're talking about like the I mean, same thing we talked about with a uh, Thompson with like just being poised, being under control, running the offense. Like he looked really good, like mm -hmm. really, really good. Looked really under control and was setting people up, scoring for himself. So that was one guy that really like caught my eye. Yeah, I actually have in my notes here. He kind of watching his game, and I'm gonna be very, very specific with my word choice. It felt Luca esque. In the sense that you're not going to speed him up, right? You can't really mm -hmm. prevent him from getting to his spots. Like, he's going to do everything at his pace, um, use his length really well um, to get there. Um, his finishing was, again, at the size that he is, great touch around the rim, strong finishes through contact. Um, so, yeah, in that sense, like, he's able to use his size to get to his spots. You can't really speed up his game. Um, so, yeah, I, I love what we saw from Anthony Black. I think that he could really potentially, like, solidify, get them a young guard to kind of fit that timeline there with um, mm -hmm. with Paolo and Franz. Um, and, look, that Magic Young core is, again, look, top three in the, in the league to me. They are very, very talented group. They're a tall group. Like, that is the – I mean, it's been the way for a while. But, like, you get in these – lengthy wings and then you pair that up with like a six 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 seven point guard it's like bro y'all have got a lot of size on the court it's gonna be a tough mismatches at somewhere somewhere yeah. night in night out All right um so i really like liked his game as well um somebody else i wanted to shout out actually it's gonna be two guys here on the celtic summer league team um jordan walsh who i think actually tied his his uh his last season high with arkansas in uh points in the game i think he had 18 in this game we double check the stat sheet really quick um yeah put up 18 in this game which tied his season high at arkansas last season started the game four for four from three um what really popped for me was his his play off the ball um feeling for when to cut his feeling to his relocation on threes was really nice in that game um you know his ability to just find space um, off of, you know, any type of dribble penetration, getting open, looking, you know, trying to get into the, the point guard's, uh, you know, eyesight. Um, so that was great. He was very, very scrappy on the defensive end. Uh, now, like, playing for the Celtics, it felt almost Marcus Smart-ish, like diving on the floor for loose balls, um, you know, scrappy at the point of attack. Um, and something else I really – I noticed, it never felt like he was ever out of the play. Um, even in the pick and roll, if he gets beat and is trailing the play, he's never he's never giving up on that. He's he's contesting shots from behind. He's looking to get blocks from behind. Um, if he is beat and someone rotates over to kind of pick up the roller, like he's immediately looking for any type of kickout passes. He got I think one or two steals that way. Um, so very active in the passing lane as well. So really liked what I saw from Jordan Walsh. He could come in and, and be a legitimate um, asset for the Celtics team. You know, being as heavily loaded as they are. Um, with their their big three now with JT, JB, and, and Porzingis. Um, and shout out J.D. Davison, too, as well. So as good of a relocation job that, that Jordan Walsh was doing, J.D. Davison had a double-double, 14 points and 11 assists. He is now, I think, top three or top two all-time in assists per game in summer league. 
Um, I think he's putting up like eight, almost nine assists per game in for the last two summer leagues. So um, he didn't really, he didn't, I don't think got any real run with the, the regular season roster, spent a lot of time with the main Celtics in the G League last year. So um, hopefully he may be able to, to crack the rotation this year for the Celtics because he is a, a legitimate facilitator and floor general type of guy. Um, the person that stole the show in this game for me um, was Orlando Robinson. He put up 36 and 11 with two blocks. And for watching it, they were talking about on the broadcast, you know, playing for the Heat. He worked with Bam a lot. And I can see that. Like, he had moments in the game where, like, he plays really like a traditional big, like, screen setter, hard roller, can finish through contact really well. Um, was really active on the offensive glass, putting back shots, you know, bringing it down, putting it back up. Um, but he has a good jump shot. He made teams pay. I think he ended up going three for four from three. So anytime they kind of sagged off of him on the perimeter, he made them pay. I saw him take people off the dribble. Like it just, it was like, okay, that looks like some band probably worked mm-hmm. on with him. Like it felt he had his moments where it's like, you, you could tell that the two of them worked together. Um, and so that is a, a nice little asset to his game, like being as quality at the, uh, you know, the traditional big man things that he is, um, but also having the ability to stretch the floor if needed. Um, so I really liked what I saw from Orlando Robinson as well. Um, yeah. What about you? What's another guy that, uh, that popped for you first two days of summer league? I mean, I can't go without talking about Keontae George. Like yep. he, he just – a bucket that's just what he looked like he just looked like a bucket out there he i think he ended up with what 33 points mm-hmm. um he made six three shot 50 percent from like from two point he he just looked like a bucket out there he started like, heat checking like yeah he like, started heat checking i think he got his kind of got he got the confidence going and the some of them threes he was pulling was just i know i have it going tonight let me throw this up and it just cashed in so right. that was really really good to see so it's a lot of listen it's a lot of young players that are just like I, they just look like they can have bright futures. I know it's early. I know it's summer league. Like you know, you don't want to get too ahead of yourself, but yeah. just you see a lot of guys here that at least have the tools, that the tools to be something in the NBA. Basically, whether I'm not saying everyone's going to be a superstar, but at least you see guys who have the tools to be to carve out a role in the NBA. Basically, so that was mm-hmm. really really good to see, to be honest. And I'm just like I'm sitting here and I'm I'm looking at my computer and I honestly just wrote down all of like the who, what I think is young cores in the league. And bro, it's gonna be crazy in a couple of years, bro. Like it is, yeah. Cause like, even you said you was like, all right, yeah, I think the Rockets core is like top three in the league. And I'm just, and I thought about, it, I'm just, I wrote them all down like Rockets, Pistons, I would say Pacers, Magic, the OKC, they're all still young, yeah. Hornets, Blazers, Spurs. All of them could have a case to say like, I got a top three young <laughs> core in the league. Like who? Yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm thinking like in my head, I was just trying to like, which one do I think is like the best here? They all could say, yo, we have the best young core in the league. They all could mm-hmm. say that. So I think in a, in a couple of years, even now it's going to be crazy, but in a couple of years, listen, the league is in good hands. That's all I'm going to say. It is in great hands, in great hands. Like in five, six-year time, it's like we're going to be in the middle of primes for guys like Luka, Jason Tatum, Shea, mm-hmm. Ja. And at the same time, it's like we're going to have, like, right approaching the start of their primes, Paolo, Franz, Ahmed Thompson, School. Wemby, School. Like, right. it's very, like, <laughs> the talent Crazy. level is getting, like, the NBA is going to need an expansion team or two. Very Like, they, I think they need it now, to be honest, because it's like. I think so as well. You've seen there's people, there's too much, bro, there's too much talent in the league right now. And a yeah. lot of these guys. Like, the talent is overlapping because a lot of these guys are on the same teams. Like, they need to have more teams so we can spread out the talent a little bit. Like, this past year, didn't they have, like, a record for amount of 20-point-per-game scores there was in the NBA? Yep. Like, that's crazy. Like, I remember, like, I remember, like, growing up, if you scored 25 a game... It was a you bucket. Were, you was yeah. a bucket. Like you was an elite a, score. Like. <laughs> right. You was an elite level score. If you averaged 30, you were different. Like, you were, like, KD... That's why we looked at KD like he was a god. Like, he mm-hmm. averaged 30 points. Melo, all those top scorers, if you averaged 30, you were different. Now there's a bunch of guys scoring 30. It's still impressive, don't get me wrong. But averaging 30, averaging 25, it isn't the same as, like, what it used to be right now. Because offense in this league is getting insane. Yeah, it's 
on another level. Um, like you said, we are we are in what I feel like is about to be like the golden age of basketball. Like we're really about to see crazy levels of talent across the board we've never ever seen before. Which I know is going to create some nasty discourse because we're gonna we're gonna get into like our 40s and 50s, and guys are gonna be like. They're gonna be hating on people from this generation. Facts. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. They're gonna be like, I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm be an old head. <laughs> all, all the people I grew up watching. <laughs> Facts. But nah, it's man. I, I, I'm thinking too. It's like, which one of these teams would I not want to watch next year? Like, I would. I'm gonna want to watch every single one of these teams. Like, even the teams that suck are gonna be entertaining to watch. I got about. 10 different league pass teams. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to be I'm about to have to get it set up on the computer. We get the, the quad box and watch mm-hmm. four at once. And I'm going to just be, I'm going to have a laptop put up to the side. So I get another right. four, I have eight going at the same time. Facts. Um, Cause there's just, there's so much. A um, couple more guys I want to shout out before we move off of summer league. Uh, my guy, Kenny Lofton Jr. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Put up 23 and, and uh, 23 and four rebounds with uh, two steals and three blocks. Um, he ended up um, two of three from three. So, like, he just – the big body is no joke, bro. It's no mm-hmm. joke. It's unguardable, bro. <laughs> for real. It for real is. Uh, so, you know, shout out to him. Um, also want to touch on um, – Below Kulubali, um with the Wizards, who struggled, you know, to shoot. Which again, like we mentioned uh, after the draft, is one of the more raw prospects, maybe the most raw prospect with the most upside um, in the in the draft. And so, it makes sense for the Wizards to take the big swing and get him. But again, the athleticism and the the defense and the length pops again. He's six seven six eight with a seven foot two wingspan. Um, had a really nice chase down block, which again is completely due to just his motor on the defense side of the ball and the fact that it's like bro I have seven foot two arms. Mm-hmm. Um and so so that pops there. He he really has the potential to, to turn into an elite elite defender. And if the offense ever smooths itself out to you know a decent level, um he'll have a very long career in this league. So so shout out to him there as well. He also I was kind of surprised his handle um it looked it looked solid. It looked solid. It um you know, it was a little bit erratic at times, but he looked very comfortable um, handling the ball, trying to take people off the dribble. Um, so, so I like that from him. I wasn't wasn't expecting that to kind of come over so early. So, uh, so shout out to him. Also, want to shout out um, Jairus Walker, um, who with the Pacers put up eight points and thirteen rebounds, five assists, three steals, three blocks. Really filled up the stat sheet there um, in that game. Um, Benedict Mathurin as well put up 27 points in that game. So I really liked what I saw from Jairus Walker, the defensive versatility, which is, you know, where he was his bread and butter um, in college. Um, that popped immediately off day one. So this Pacers roster, they are deep. This is a deep, deep team. Yeah. Um, and I am very, very excited to see them this upcoming year, you know, with Halliburton. With Buddy Hill, with Miles Turner, with Obi Toppin, with Benedict Matherin, and you're going to also be bringing in Jarris Walker as well. Ben Shepard and Andrew Namhart as well could you know potentially play some some roles off the bench. Um, so I, I'm very excited to see this this Pacers team this year. Um, any other guys that you you really want to kind of touch on before we move into uh, the uh, the off season or not off season the end season tournament? Um. I mean, one guy uh, that I mean, it's not really a surprise. I well, I'm mainly talking about Chet Holmgren, mm-hmm. you know, because I think he has the same situation as Wimby as far as worst case scenario, he's going to be an elite level defensive player. Like the right. rim protection is ridiculous. He's going to be able to space the floor for an OKC team that loves to get to the basket. So, um, I mean, I knew. I think pretty much everyone knows that like he was gonna come out here and play well. You know what I mean? Like he's had a year to work on his game after he recovered from that injury. So, uh, yeah, he he's been really really impressive out here, and I just think that it's gonna be good to see his impact on a team that already isn't like a playing situation. Will that allow them along with like the development from like a J Dub and Shea? 
will that allow them to take a step from the play-in team into like, all right, now we're a playoff team. And then maybe mm -hmm. even further, because right now you already have a first team all NBA caliber like star player on your team. Yeah, you can add in a Chet Holmgren who's going to be an elite level defensive player. And if that offensive game, which is still, it's just still good right now, but even if it takes another step forward, the OKC could be scary and not just looked at as like, oh, a young core, like that young core. Like they could be looked at as like, okay, this team is like legitimately making some noise in the West. So that's, that was really, really good to see. Yeah, Chet, he struggled a little bit offensively in those first couple games in, in California Summer League. Um, had a much better offensive showing in this game. Mm -hmm. um, again, the the handle for a guy that size is always going to be well, well above what you expect. Is on par with kind of what we saw. We said about you know Wemby earlier. It's just I've seen him bring the ball up the court. He's handling the ball on the perimeter. Um, you know, has a, a bag to be able to get to his spots and, and get around people. Um, and like you said, the the defense at absolute worst is always going to be an elite rim protector. Um, finished the game with a double double, 16 and 10, with two blocks and a steal as well. Um, Got to talk about his teammate too while we're here. Case and Wallace started the game. I think he had five for five for six from three in the first quarter. Um, so the three pointer on him is legit. Um, it is as advertised. Um, he had great relocation for them in that that first half. And the jumper, smooth, bro. Mm -hmm. Very very buttery. Um, so I, I really liked what I saw from him. Usman Jang has some, you know, some issues on the defensive side of the ball. Um, saw some miscommunication, some issues with switches. But again, he's another one of those raw, really lengthy wings. Um, had a good showing on the offensive side of the ball. Five for nine from the field, three for seven from three. Finished up with 13 points and three assists and a steal as well. So um, I like this Thunder team. I like what I've seen from Trey Mann as well. Um, going back to the, the California Summer League. Uh, they have a like again like they're a deep team and they're deep in terms of their like their young core like their mm -hmm. young depth as well like Trey Mann is gonna be a like a bench player for them he might not even really be in that you know top six seven maybe eight man rotation for this this Thunder team but they're a very good player so uh, yeah this this thunder team is nice um also i shout out on the maverick side of thing in this game maverick side of thing um derrick lively um i liked what i saw from him as well like them getting this kind of big man is perfect to pair around luca like again like type of uh, archetype nick claxton jared allen like screen setter you know hard roller defends the rim like that's all you really need out of a big man um with a, a backcourt like, you know, Luca and Kyrie. Um, so I really like that fit there. Um, you know, saw him, you know, rolling to the rim hard, good screens, was able to rebound decently in his, his, you know, didn't play a ton of minutes in this game. I think he only played 15, 16 minutes. But um, I liked what I saw for, from Derek Lively there. Jaden Hardy also had 24 points in this game. Um, he looks to continue to be like a steal. Don't know how he fell that low in the draft last year or so. Um if he can really get it going, like this Mavericks offense is going to be ridiculous to try to stop, even more than it already seems like it's going to be. Um, so, so shout out to them as well. Um, yeah, today we got Wimby's back in action against um, the Blazers team, like we said earlier, with no school Henderson. Um, so, so again, unfortunate with that injury, but hopefully we can see a bounce back game for him. Your boy Max Christie is taking on Brandon Miller today. Um, so, Excited to continue to see how summer league goes and you about to cook um, him. <laughs> you about to cook Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller gonna file out. You're gonna get 10 Yo. fouls. <laughs> that would be crazy. If somebody <laughs> fouls out of a summer league game, like I don't know, bro. Ten fouls. You give me ten fouls, like in, in 25 minutes, it's, there's no way, bro. Nah, no chance. Ten. <laughs> that's a lot of fouls, bro. There's no chance. No chance of fouling. <laughs> oh, you give me ten fouls. I might use a lot of them though. That's why I said like I don't. I just think he's like, yo, I got ten. Like, let me use them. Yeah, I think that's really what it is. Um, but yeah, you got any other last last people you want to touch on in summer league before we kind of move on into the, the end season tournament? No, no, no I'm chilling. Cool. Um. So, yeah, it kind of been rumored, not rumored, but in the CBA, we didn't really know too, too much about you know, formatting. Um, all of that was fully rolled out by the NBA yesterday, the in-season tournament, um, which is, I I was very skeptical at first. 
I still, it's like the incentives behind it are, I don't know how much people are really going to care about it. We'll have to see. But the way that they set it up in the regular season schedule makes a ton of sense. Split the NBA up into three different groups in the East, three different groups in the West. So six groups in total, five teams per group. Apparently it was a random draw. Um, and so I think it goes based on your regular season record, I believe, up to that point, how you get seated in those groups. And I think this is happening in November. Um, and you basically play two home, two away um, against everybody else in your group. And I think the top seed or the, the top record from each group advances. Um, and then there is a, uh, a wild card team, I think, from both conferences that makes it to the next round as well, which is the, the highest finishing team that didn't win a group in each conference. Um, and so they will play quarterfinal games. Um, and then the final four, which will be the semifinals and the finals of the end season tournament is going to be in Las Vegas, December 7th and December 9th. Um, I think those games don't count as regular season games. So all of the, the group play games, you're playing all the teams in your, your group. Um, those are regular season games are kind of worked into the schedule. Um, any of the knockout stage games, those are like, I think they kind of live in the same areas, like the play in tournament where it's not really a part of the regular season or the postseason. It's like this weird gray area. Um, but I think it'll be, be interesting. Um, I, I like how they have it set up with the, the groups. Um, the random draw is nice because there's a couple of groups that are, are stacked and we're guaranteed to get some nice matchups. Like um, the, the Nuggets group includes the Nuggets, the Clippers, the Pelicans, the Mavericks, and the Rockets. And so we're going to get Nuggets, Clippers, Nuggets, Mavericks, Clippers, Mavericks, Pelicans, Nuggets. Like those are all going to be really, really good matchups. And it's all going to be taking place throughout, um, I think it's a two week stint in November. Um, so I, I was very, very skeptical at how this was going to work, but um, I think it. I think it's set up well, and I think it's all going to depend on how how teams, you know, really value the knockout portion, and if they're, you know, if we see nobody sitting now, everybody playing, and it's like it's competitive for real. Um, this could be a really interesting move to shake up what can be one of the more dead parts of the the regular season, like about, you know, two months before the trade deadline, like the season's kind of underway, not a whole bunch of, of movement is going on. Um, so I think this could be a good move for the NBA and with the dates that they have, NBA is smart. They set it up so that we're going to be in the middle of December. So you're like wrapping up the back couple of weeks of football season. And so there's going to be Monday night football on Monday. Tuesday, I think, is the first of the semifinals or both the semifinal games. Um, then you have Wednesday, Thursday is Thursday night football. And then Friday night, you have the championship of the end season tournament. And then Saturday is one of the last seasons of college football. So they took two of the three mm -hmm. available days in the schedule. So they're smart and <clears throat> scheduled it correctly. Um, so I, I think they did it really right. But what are your kind of initial reactions to the end season tournament? I think it's interesting. Um, yeah, like I think it's an interesting format. Um, it was a little bit confusing at first when I first looked at it, but it, I think it could be interesting and I think it could be good. But I do think it all depends on how the players take it. Like you said, the players and the teams take it now because we know already especially those older players, the regular season games don't mean as much to them. Right. Like They don't really care as much. They sit out a lot of games. Um, they load manage a lot. So are they going to take those seriously? And like you said, the games that don't count towards the regular season and like have, like have don't count towards the playoffs, it's like I think the younger guys are going to play play those games regardless. Like I just think they're going to compete. They want to play those games regardless. But those older, older veterans who like – Bro, they've done everything already. Like, they played a number of regular season games. Are they going to care enough to take those those games seriously? So, I think it's all going to come down to whether the players 
make it a good thing basically because mm-hmm. it, it can all sound good but then if a lot of the older the older star players are like sitting out or they're not really taking it as serious then it's really not going to be it's really not going to change anything as far as them not taking games seriously in the regular season yeah i, I think that'll really be the the make or break for this um if they can get it uh if they can get people to buy into it um then that will be uh that'll be good um yeah every single game aside from the championship game so apparently the semifinal games will actually still count towards the regular season the only game that won't count um in terms of regular season will be the championship game itself so okay not too bad um that's not bad even if you do make the championship game then you play 83 games versus 82 um i don't see if i can find the the prizes here that i was gonna ask that too what are like what do they get because i feel like having something like this i mean it's still they're looking they're gonna look at it as regular season games if there's no like incentive to really go hard at it you know what i mean yeah um it says that the in-season tournament prize pool will be allocated to the players on the teams that participate in the knockout rounds so and and you get more money depending on how far you progress so if you make the knockout round you get bread if you make it to the semifinals you get more and if you make the finals you get more and i'm assuming obviously if you win you get the most um now unless we're talking like multiple millions that probably isn't phasing the vast majority of the nba roster Mm -hmm. uh but they're all (laughs) there's gonna be an mvp of the in-season tournament oh my god why are (laughs) we doing this bro do you bro i can hear the basketball discourse now how many in-season tournament mvps does this player have compared to this guy how many in-season tournament wins does this guy like bro Oh, this is gonna get so gross. So you know what? Maybe that'll get some some people to buy in more. You could you might not get the regular season MVP, but you might be a two time NBA two. Cup in season <laughs> MVP. Oh my god, it's gonna be so gross. This guy, are we seriously? I can hear the I, the sports shows now. Are we seriously gonna give Jokic three in season MVPs back in season tournament MVPs back to back to back to back? Like, are we seriously <laughs> gonna do this? Like, bro, it's. Oh, I can hear the talk now. It's going to be so gross, bro. It's going to be so gross. Like, <laughs> I, I just hope that, like, fans, just this, none of this should count towards anyone's legacy, anyone. Like, don't bring this up, bro. And if I'm in an right. argument with somebody talking about the Lakers and they bring up, but we beat you out in the in-season tournament, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm, a, I'm we knocked you out of the in season tournament though. Like I'm gonna lose my mind, bro. It's gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen. Um, Somebody, please don't, pl- don't bring that up to me. I swear yeah. I'll block you. Do not talk to me about that. <laughs> um, but but look, at the end of the day, I like it. I think it spices up um, the the regular season. They're gonna be playing every Tuesday and Friday from November third to twenty eighth. Is gonna be. They're calling them tournament nights. So all of the games are going to be happening on Tuesdays and Fridays. So teams will know that they're playing for that NBA Cup in-season tournament. Um, I guess they're going to be making a new trophy for it as well. Um, So, again, it's all going to be based on how much the teams and the players buy in. But I just like that they're they're shaking it up. They're trying to do something different to to what could otherwise typically be one of the more drier parts of the season Um, as we – are a little bit removed from the start, but still have a ways to go before, um, you know, the trade deadline. So overall, I like it. Um, like we said, it's all going to be based on, on, on player and team buy-in. Mm-hmm. Um, next, want to want to catch up on some of the, the free agency moves that have happened since we last recorded. Um, one of the biggest ones being that Dallas is acquiring Grant Williams in a, essentially a three-team sign-in trade. Um, so Mavericks are getting Grant Williams. The Spurs then are getting Reggie Bullock from the Mavericks and an unprotected pick swap from Dallas in 2030, which I think is low-key underrated um, because they may be banking on, you know, we're, we're looking at like six years from now, is Luca still there? Are y'all right. in the middle of a rebuild? Because at that point in time, you know, you're looking at year six, Wemby, all of a sudden, you might have a, a 
a really high asset first round pick that you could potentially flip. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like that, you know, that addition as well. Celtics ended up getting a couple of second round picks, so they don't lose Grant Williams for nothing, but this is a very, very good signing. I think the Mavericks have 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 had an underrated free agency and kind of draft period as well. Like I said earlier, again, Derek Lively, he fits what you would want as in a big around, um, Luca and Kyrie. And then obviously you lose DFS in the, the Kyrie deal last year, but you, now you bring in another um, high quality wing defender, somebody that's definitely a better shooter um, than DFS. We saw what he did against Milwaukee in game seven. Um, but, you know, even if it's never to that level um, consistently, like at worst, you're getting a guy who's going to be a consistent, um, you know, probably 35 ish percent three point shooter, which is perfect for um, the type of gravity that t- the two guards there are going to be pulling. So he'll have a lot of open shots there in Dallas. Um, and again, you're, you're getting a little bit more size perimeter defense. Like you're checking off a lot of those gaps that we've identified, um, in that Mavericks roster. So I like this pickup for them a lot. hundred percent. Uh, we talked about it before. Grant Williams is going to be, is somebody who works well around other stars basically because he's not going to do too much. He's going to be able to play his role. He's going to get, like you said, a lot of open shots that he's going to be able to hit down. Um, and they need they need that that defense that he's gonna bring. They need that because that's what they're missing on that team. They don't need anyone that they don't really need more shot creation and no more scoring. They don't need any more of that. They just need guys who can play defense and hit open shots, and that's exactly what Grant Williams can do. So I like that signing for them. Not signing. I like that trade for them a whole whole lot. And shout out to the Celtics for not losing him for nothing. Right. So that's uh, yeah, that's better than nothing. So definitely look. We see a couple second round picks to get you some good players in this league this day. So yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. Uh, yeah, so I, all, all around, I like it for for everybody involved. But the Mavs, I think, picking up Grant Williams ended up being a four year, fifty four million dollar deal. So honestly, really good value too um, for the Mavericks. That could turn out to be a really really good contract for them mm-hmm. um, if he can carve out a really nice role there for them um, in Dallas. So. Huge, huge pickup for them. They almost were able to pair him up with Matisse Thybul. They attempted to sign him to a, a three-year, $33 million offer sheet. Um, but the Trailblazers did match, so he will be going back to Portland um, and kind of be a part of that young core. Again, the offense has always been the question mark. Um, he looks a little bit lost on the offensive side of the, the, the ball at times. Um, and the shot is very, very hit or miss. Um mm-hmm. So that has to continue to get better. But again, at worst, he is easily all defensive level defender, like one of the most unique players in terms of like he's not the tallest guy, but again, has really long arms, uses his length really well. And he has some of the best defensive instincts in the league, sniffing out passing lanes, figuring out where the ball is going um, and can really harass ball handlers is a great point of attack defender. So. Um, I'm glad they were able to bring him back. I think some Trailblazer fans were surprised um, at, at wanting to keep him around for this part of the rebuild. But like I said, I think, again, at worst, like you're getting an all defensive type guy. And if the offense ever comes around even a little bit, like he'll be a very, very good NBA player for years to come. All I know is <laughs> thank you, Portland, because if they, if the Mavs could get, could have got uh, Matisse. And actually had solid defenders around Luka and Kyrie Irving. Mm-hmm. That team is very, very, very scary. Because, like we said, the offense was never the problem. Even when they were losing games, like they could score the basketball. That's not the problem. Like they, you give Luka and Kyrie Irving great defenders around them, spacing around them, get some bigs on that team, bro. They could be a, a dangerous team in the West. I still think they are. A, a very dangerous team in the West. It depends on how, like, their rookies that they, they drafted develop a little bit. But, I mean, you have Kyrie Irving, you have Luka Doncic. Literally anything's possible when you have Luka on your team. So, right. Like, if you build a solid enough roster around him, like, we've seen Luka went to the conference finals with Jalen Brunson as his number two and just shooters and defense around him. Like, he doesn't really need much. So, if you give him a, a really good team and then you give him a number two with Kyrie Irving, yeah, that team that team could be a lot scary. A lot, a lot more scary if they had Matisse, but still, nevertheless, that that's not a team that you can sleep on in the West. Yeah, I uh, they were able to get Matisse. Ooh, bring in Seth Curry, and it's like that's one of them top teams. Nice, Um, like 
credit to them. We we again had so many question marks bringing in Kyrie and like, where do you go for center play? Where do you get your defense from? Like y'all are just looking like we'll score 150, but we might give up 160. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, but they're bringing in pieces around them to, to build out the team the right way. So I'm, I'm interested to see how, how the fits all work out um, with the Mavericks, but I think that they will be a not a, a team that misses the playing tournament this year. Mm -hmm. No, playoff, playoff lock for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, also, DeJounte Murray finalized a four-year $120 million veteran max extension with the Hawks. Um, so like I said, I, I think the move is to keep them. I, I really don't want him to be traded, at least not until they can get a full off season with Quinn Snyder. And like, let's really see how this looks this, you know, first half of this year, if it's not looking good, then, then I, you know, if we want to, the Hawks want to shop the market. I can understand, but like, let it get its fair shake before we're so quick to pull the plug on this. Again, you gave up what three first round picks to get him in the first place um and you just traded john collins away for scraps like you literally traded away so that you didn't get in the second second whatever luxury tax apron mm -hmm. so commit to this like let's see where it goes um there's other moves that you can make to retool before blowing up train Dejounte as the first option so um i like the deal i'm interested to see how they pan out together um Paul Reed, B-Ball Paul, um, is signing an offer sheet with the Utah Jazz, which is a three-year, $24 million deal, which has the, some of the wildest mm -hmm. incentives I've ever seen. Danny Ainge, you are a wizard. I don't know how. <laughs> if you are Paul Reed's agent, like, I don't know, you might have to get fired if you Yeah, why do you agree to that? Like, the, I think the first year you get, like, was, like, 15 M's is guaranteed, and then after that, it's – not guaranteed unless the Jazz make the conference semis, which... Wait, whatever team he's on makes the conference semis, basically. So, yeah. like, whether it's the Jazz or if the Sixers want to match it, all they got to do is win one playoff series, and then now it's guaranteed. Like, he, I think he, he did it to get at the Sixers, but, like, it's just... Why do you agree to that if you're Paul if you're a Paul Reed's agent? Like, I don't get why you agree to that. I that makes know. no sense. I don't, know. I don't think I've ever seen that language in a contract before, like... Yeah, that well. specifically um but honestly i would not be surprised if the sixers let him walk like they just brought in mo bamba um and then they brought back trez too so they have montrez harrell there so like to me you bring in paul reed and you get rid of montrez but bringing him back it feels like you're just it's too many bigs um and mm -hmm. especially with trez and b-ball both being kind of undersized like you'll never really have a role for both of them all right. Um, so I would have liked having, you know, Joel and then you have Mo if you need to go, you know, need the rim protection. You still need the size, but you need a floor spacer. If you need a bigger body, somebody that plays on the inside, then you could opt for Paul Reed and those Joel and Beadless minutes. But not with Trez too, money just it doesn't make sense to me at that point. So mm -hmm. um, I don't think that the Sixers are going to match. Um, but speaking of speaking of size and can shoot. Um, we talked about their offseason being they did a lot with very little. And the Phoenix Suns are the front runners now to sign Bowl Bowl. Listen. Um, man. <laughs> what what do you have to lose, right? Like what do you have to lose? Bro, like Bowl Bowl, Book Knight, Cam Reddish, who else? I'm trying to think of guys. Who are not that good, but get hyped up as if they are like stars. Not, I'm not gonna say Cam Reddish. I actually do think he's a. He's I was a good I think Cam Reddish. No, 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 I do. Legit. But he, but I also think he's overrated from like the, the um basketball discord side of it. Like he, I think he's, he's a good player. I think he's, he's reached a little bit the prove it point in his career. Like yeah, like he's got to show, show something like. now. That's what I'm saying. I think he's actually a good player. But like, <laughs> like bro, I've seen literally just talking about this. I seen yesterday a TikTok. And it was James Book Knight's highlights. And it was like, why is he not the starting shooting guard of the Hornets? I'm like, bro, there's a lot of reasons why he's not the starting shooting guard of the right. Hornets. And like I've seen countless talk about Bol Bol. Like, bro, he just needs a chance. He just needs somebody just has to give him a chance. I'm like, bro, this is going to be what his third fourth, real chance, third? third or fourth. Bro, at some point that has to just tell you something. Like if this guy, it's first for what, four years in the league is on three different teams. Like that has to 
tell you a little bit of something. Like I get it. Like he, it looks good. He has like great little highlights. He's like tall, dribbling the ball, shoot a little bit. Like it looks good. But like, there there are reason why this guy isn't getting minutes and 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 is it on like isn't contributing to like winning teams. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why that stuff happens. So like, those highlights don't let the highlights fool you. Like these guys are vet, not even vet men. They're minimum players for a reason. Like right. That's why they're on different teams. Like, yeah. if they were really this good player that you think they are, like, potentially be great player that you really think they have, they would be, they would be in one situation. They would, they wouldn't be bouncing around the league, basically. So, I mean, for the Suns, they just need bodies. So, I mean, I guess it makes sense. But I just think if they, if Bobo ends up signing with the Suns, I guarantee you, you can go on Twitter, you can go on TikTok, and you'll see like, oh my God. They're, this is the missing piece. They're so stacked now. They have bowl, bowl. Like I saw a Lakers fan literally making videos <laughs> when bowl, bowl got waived. They were like, "Please, Rob Palinka, we need bowl, bowl. Please." Stop. I'm like, "Bro, what are you talking about? Why? <laughs> Why do we need bowl, bowl? Like, yeah, like, no, we need one more center on the team. We need bowl, bowl. Like, please go sign him. He's a demigod. I'm like, bro, this isn't 2K. Like, right. This is <laughs> like this is not 2K. This bro. is not the wreck, bro. <laughs> it's not, bro. We do not need Bobo. Like that's not the one. That's not the center. <laughs> if we get in one more center, that's not the one I want. I'm sorry. Look, like you said, right? It, it's your reason that he keeps getting, you know, moving from team to team. And if you know, he had a great start to the year last year, but he fell out of the rotation for a reason, right? The shot mm -hmm. stopped falling, which was the biggest upside, and. On a team as young as the Magic, like if they're waving him, like okay, you know, like cool, he's gonna go take a flyer with Phoenix, like, and he'll probably really like they don't have Bismack anymore, right? Like he'll be the. I thought Bismack was on the team. Oh, uh, okay. If he still is, then it's like even still, bro. <laughs> you're going against the Nuggets. Your center options are DeAndre A and Bismack and Bol Bol against Jokic. That's so disgusting. Bar, book, Q, chicken. I don't know what kind of chicken <laughs> in Serbia, but it's that kind of chicken. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, look, I. <laughs> He's got a good PR team. That's really what it is. Like, he has Maybe, a great PR yeah. team, bro. Like, that's why I said I, 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 I lumped him in with Cam Reddish, even though I do think Cam Reddish is a good player, but, like, he's one of those guys also that, like, Fans will always say he just needs a chance. He just needs a chance. That's one guy I believe in, but him, I see him book night. And I'm pretty sure there's a couple other guys that I'm forgetting that people swear up and down. It's like they just need a chance and they're going to turn into the greatest role player ever. But at some point, bro, you just got to give it up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I think for real, like, this is Cam Reddish. Like, this is make or break for him on a Lakers. Like, 100%. I think there's like we're in the boat of people that are defending him. There's a lot of people I think that have jumped off the Cam Reddish shit with the, you know, defensive lapses and the inconsistent shooting and locker room, whatever. Like they don't believe. I still believe, but I'm not a GM. <laughs> I can't guarantee you much, and if you don't, you don't perform this year. Um, yeah, I believe it for the minimum. That's that's what I believe. I'm yeah. fine with the money. <laughs> Um, last big deal. This one actually came out yesterday. Um, not a player, but a coach. <laughs> the winningest coach in NBA history. Greg Popovich, who, let me double check. I think he's 78. Damn. Maybe older. 74. 74. Um, I say 78. You need to retire, buddy. God well, damn. Look, this contract is a five-year, $80 million deal. He'll be 79, almost 80 when it's over. Um, that's that's kind of wild, bro. Granted, he does have multiple titles. Like I think he's technically like, you know, part of player personnel, basketball ops, whatever. So there is a potential for him to move out and still be on contract, even if he's no longer the head coach of the team. Mm -hmm. Which I just cannot see him coaching all the way into his 80s. But who knows? Like they, like he is San Antonio. He is the mind of the Spurs' way of offensive defensive philosophy locker room coach like it's all built upon popovich philosophies and he's got the biggest coaching tree um in the nba right now so he gets big time paid uh, like i said five year 80 million dollar deal um and uh, like i said he can transition out of it so i wouldn't be surprised if that's the case um and you know maybe two three years like he gets the initial part of of Wemby's career and then he kind of phases out um, but 
shout out to him still getting the bag at, at 74 years old. Um, so credit to him. Credit yeah, to just, him. I'm a. Uh... I hope that the Spurs actually do go back into being like one of those contending teams. Cause it's been, I feel like it's been a while since we've seen Popovich, you know, in the playoffs, you know, making those it's adjustments. Been a long it's, time. It's, it's been a long, long time. So I think I think it's only right if uh, if they get back into that, you know, that winning mindset basically, and not this this tanking, terrible rebuilding team. Yeah. Um, that is all the the free agency updates. I said we ain't touching on Dame until the, the deal is done. So we will see. That, bro. I'm straight. And all the reports are kind of pointing to, you know, Bobby Marks was on was on Summer League. They were interviewing him at halftime. And he said everything sounds like it may be like a KD situation from last year, you know, where this may play out all the way well into the regular season and through tra- you know, through training camp. So um I'm expecting this to be a long process because be real, bro. He, he is under contract for four more years. Portland don't mm. have to trade him. Yeah, yeah he's there under no pressure. Yeah, man, it's. I feel like you just should just trade him. But I I think that this whole I'm only going to Miami thing. I think mm-hmm. that's a little much. Like I think if Boston put if Boston says yo, we'll give you Jalen Brown. You're playing for Boston, bro. I'm sorry. Like you're going to Boston. If the Sixers go, we're giving you Tyrese Maxey. You're going to the Sixers, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not hearing this whole, I'm only trading you to Boston. Like, I understand, uh, like, I can respect your wishes and send you to a contender. But, bro, if the if the heat package sucks and say Boston's like, all right, fine, we'll give you Jalen Brown. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. You go, better go buy a coat because it get cold in Boston. But <laughs> that's where you're going to go play. Let me, let me ask you this because I've seen people say this and I have mixed opinions. Do you think if the Trailblazers don't trade Dame to Miami, and they trade him to somebody like Boston or Utah or San, any number of teams, right? Is anybody but Miami, just they take the best offer they can get. Do you think that really affects their how they're viewed across the league? Like, will star players not want to go to Portland because they, they feel like they're not taken care of? They, I mean, they're not already really a free agency destination because it's not a big time market like a LA, a New York, a Miami, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, like, do you think that's something that they should really be considering, or should they just really go and get the best offer? I think they should consider it just because Dame is the arguably the best player in your organization's history. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it, I, I think they should consider it, but they shouldn't. How can, I, how can I explain this? They could, they should consider it as far as sending him to a contender. Like I think that if they send him to like Utah or even the Spurs, they're still rebuilding. You know what I mean? If they send him like mm-hmm. Utah or something like that, then I think around the league they'll be looked at as like, all right, like they they did Dame dirty. You know what I mean? Like he gave you his all, he was loyal for all these years, and you're gonna ship him off to Utah. Like you know he doesn't want to go to Utah. Like I feel like that then that would give them a bad look. But I think that they won't be looked at as bad if they sent him to like the Sixers or Boston because they're still a, a contending team. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So like, if, as long as they send him to a contender, I don't think that team like players around the league would look at the the Trailblazers like, all right, they mishandled that Dame situation. My only thing is like, I get it, and I'm I know that that's a thing that players consider and like. There's, I'm sure, some good type of rapport with, you know, GMs and stuff that you can build. Like, it's, we're all humans. Like, you know, you build relationships that way. But is it really going to change Portland's perception or, like, how they're viewed in terms of free agent destinations if they trade him to Miami or if they trade him to anywhere else for the best package? Like, is the next superstar going to be like, you know, I won't go to Portland. Like, they're going to take care of me there. Like, I mean, yeah. I it's it's just not mean. a destination like that. And we've seen other teams take care of star players. We, I've seen small market teams like Oklahoma City got Paul George to the Clippers where he wanted to go in the first place. Like they mm-hmm. took care of Chris Paul. They took care of Kemba. They've done buyouts. Like they take care of their stars. Who's the last big name free agent Oklahoma City signed? Yeah. I like it's just mean. not a it's not a destination like that, you know. So you said, yeah, it's like it's already viewed as a place that like they don't want to go there anyway. So like, how bad would it hurt their reputation? Basically, right? I don't think I don't think it's gonna make 
that big of a difference. Like I said, I feel like it would be worse if you like if you're hurting your relationships with other GMs. But it's like, but at the end of the day, you need to do what's best for you as an organization. Um, if Damian Lillard didn't want to be there and he wanted to pick what team he went to, he wouldn't sign the extension. Like, mm-hmm. that's kind of how it works. Like, again, I'm all for player empowerment, player movement, whatever. Um, and look, at the time he wanted to stay in Portland, you, even if you didn't, bro, you take the bread. <laughs> like, I mm-hmm. get that 100%. But now at this point in time where he's like really trying to force his hand in Miami, like, don't really have that kind of leverage like you also don't have a no trade clause which is something i heard brian windhorse talking about which is like low-key when you think about it portland has been in like a quiet rebuild for a couple of years now like the fact that he Mm -hmm. doesn't have a no trade clause in his contract is like a well now that we've gotten to this point it's like well he has a destination he can't just force his way there we can still Mm -hmm. trade him wherever we want wherever you know we want to or we don't have to trade him i think that'd be stupid but i'm just saying that now Portland has a lot more leverage. And if I'm them, like, yeah, you want to do your best to, you know, fulfill Dame's wishes. But like, if what you're getting from Miami is this, but then what you're getting from Boston or anybody else is like up here, I think you take the better deal um, from a, a organizational standpoint. But I will, I will say this. I think that – so they could already be viewed as this place that, like, you don't really don't want to go there based off of – honestly, based off of the way they haven't built a contending team around Damian Lillard his whole mm-hmm. time there. So that, along with being a small market, um, they could already be viewed as this organization that people that teams don't – or players don't really want to go to. But I can say if you do right by Dame, it could work to repair that, uh, that reputation that you have, basically. So, so it's like – I understand what you're saying. Like it's already view- they're already viewed as a organization you don't really want to go to, but I think that it can help. I won't. Ma- it won't make it seem like it won't make it to the point where like players would just go there. And you know what I mean? Like instantly in free agency, but it can work to like build up that reputation rather than be in this place that like I right, know we're definitely not going to to, to Portland. Yeah, I just it's, I've seen people kind of go back and forth about it on Twitter. If it's like worthwhile for them to really fulfill his requests. And I think – I just don't think it is as beneficial as people are making it seem because I don't think it's going to automatically make them this free agency destination that people are going to want to go to mm. because they treat their stars well. Like, at the end of the day, it's a small market. Like, it's always going to be tough to kind of win free agents as a part of that if you don't already have people there to play around, you know? Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's – that's a – Interesting. Look, they have all the leverage in the situation, so I, I still would not bank on him necessarily going to Miami um, and, and forcing his way there. Do you believe that his agent is really calling these other teams and saying, don't trade for Dame, we're not going to play for you if you trade for him? That doesn't sound like Damian Lillard, bro. Like, right. it just didn't, like after all these years, all the stuff that you've been saying, like just the character that you're portraying to like the media and everyone, like and then – to just flip a switch and all of a sudden be like a diva, almost like, I'm not going to play for you. Like, don't even trade for me. I'm not going to play for you. I don't want to go to this team. I don't want to go to that team. Like, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't sound like Damian Lillard. Right. Like, even the stuff that was like, oh, yeah, he would he would have wanted to go to the Warriors before they got Chris Paul. I'm like. That don't sound like something Dame would do. Nah, like you and literally. I don't fault him if that was the case. It's like you said, it just, that doesn't fit his MO. Right. It's like. Well, now you're this whole other person. What happened to I'm not joining a, a super team and I'm not r- running to go with other stars? Like, what happened to all that? Now all that's just out the window? Like, it, it just doesn't sound like him. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't buy it as much as it's kind of hyped up, too. I think it's smoke and people doing extra stuff. But, mm-hmm. yeah, look, like I said, you know, this is probably going to run well through training camp into the season. So um, we'll see. But like we talked about earlier, they're in good hands with Scoot. So. Yeah, it's they showing. should just do whatever <laughs> is best for, for their organization. Mm-hmm. Um, just don't mess that one up. You build it, you build a container, Ryan. Don't mess that one up. Yeah. Last thing we want to get to on the pod today is if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. If you're listening on audio platforms, um, we're about to do the NBA crossover grid. If you haven't seen this, they, this just came out maybe it's been about a week or so. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of a three by three grid, three teams on the top, three teams on the left. Um, So you have to match a player that played for each of the corresponding grids. 
they've been been getting a kind of adding some difficulty the last couple of days here. They started adding in college teams. This is this is the most crazy one I've seen um, with being slam dunk participant as a category and all rookie second team. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and do this live um, and see if we can't knock some of these out. So off rip, um, when I look at Pacers and Jazz, I know that um, Bogdanovich has played for both of those teams, and that's Bojan Bogdanovich. No, I had to double think about it for a second. Um, so you can see once you once you type in the player name, they'll appear if it's right, and then it'll give you this percentage, which is also cool, like what percentage of other people that have completed it um, have put him in. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go through go through this live, um, see if we can't go nine for nine. Hopefully, because um, you don't get any extra guesses if you miss one. That is it. Um, is, so we'll see what we tough. can do. It's a little bit of a tough one. It's a little bit of a tough one. Um, and for the the slam dunk one, they just have to have played for the team and been in the slam dunk contest. So okay. another one that kind of comes to mind for the Mavericks is actually Vince Carter. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. I wonder, I wonder what see. the percentage is for that. I may not be that high. 33%. 33%. Okay. okay. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody from this Heat and the Mavericks one. Like, who played for the Heat and the Mavericks. I, bro, that was kind of where my mind first went. I thought it would be quick. I got nothing. It just seemed, Yeah, it seems like it would be quick. Like, it seemed like it would be easy. Hold on. Who was just in the – now we're talking about the slam dunk participants. Someone yeah. was just in one for the Jazz recently. Like, it was one of those ones that sucked. You know what I'm talking um, about? Yeah, it was. It's the same um, one I think where he like had like a picture or something like that. Was that Hamadou Diallo? Or we, I don't think he was on the Jazz. Oh nah, it's, it was some. I know for a fact he was on the Jazz. All rookie second team for the Heat, though. I'm pretty sure it's Tyler Hero. I think he made all rookie second team. He did. Okay. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. Did okay, Terrence thanks. did Terrence Ross play for the Jazz? I don't think so. Who's played for the Jazz that has been in the slam dunk contest? That's a tough one. Hmm. This is hard. Was Rudy Gay ever in the dunk contest? I don't know. I don't think so. This is like that's a tough category. Like, that, bro, the dunk contest one is crazy. <laughs> like a tough one. Um and then let me let me think through some more of the, the second team stuff. All right, I'm gonna try to get um, these players out of here. I'm trying to think of somebody. The Halliburton, Mavericks. I think, might have been second team all rookie. Actually, Matherin was second team all rookie last year, wasn't he? Cause it would have had to have been Paolo, Paolo. J Dub, I think made first team too, right? Um, so yeah, Mathur has to be second team. I mean, second team. I think so. so. Should be. No. He wasn't. No, nah, I'm cheating the system. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> uh, so we have Hero. We have Vince Carter. Um, and then we have Bogdanovich. They need to add like one or two guesses. You got, bro. You want me to get nine straight? Like, come on, bro. What are we talking about? Um, All right. Let me try to think of this. I'm trying to think of this Mavericks one. Did Halliburton make second team? He had to, right? He was. Let me try it. Oh, Oh, it's no way, bro. (laughs) Uh, this is so hard, bro. I hate the fact that they got the second team and they got the dunk contest stuff in there. That's not because annoying. That is difficult. All right, let me try to think of Mavericks teams. Okay, I'm just all right. No, he wasn't on the Heat. Tough. I'm trying to think. All right, the I I do this by like thinking of like era. So like the Dirk Nowinski Mavericks. Yeah, yeah. So like him. Tyson Chandler, Chandler, Jason Terry, Jason Kidd, Jason Sean Carey, Marion, um, Deshaun Stevenson, uh, Brennan Haywood, Brian Cardinal. None of those dudes play for the Heat. Literally. 
Karan Butler. Michael Finley. Well, did Karan Butler play? For? Mm. I feel like he. Mm. The Heat. Actually, I feel like he played for the Heat at some point, right? I don't know. Um, I think I just got a good pull in my head though for slam dunk. You see this? And and second team rookie. Mm. Oh, okay. That that percentage got me mad high. Yeah, I feel like people just had to guess that one. Yeah, yeah 58. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that percentage got to be mad. Oh, who the heck on the Pacers has made all rookie second team? I feel like it can't be this difficult. All right, let me just think of Pacers then for the Mavericks. Is nobody that play, that's on the Pacers now. Mm -mm. I'm now I'm trying to think of like the Paul George era, Grant Hill, Roy Hibbert, David West. Lance Stevenson. Lance wasn't on the mat, not on the Mavericks. I don't think. I can even go back to like Jalen Rose. We going way, way back. That's what I'm saying, bro. I be I have to, at this point. Like the Reggie Miller, like the Reggie Miller era. Mm -hmm. Rick Smiths. Oh, this is hard. This one is a bro, this is the toughest one I think they've ever put out. I thought Easily. the Yukon one was tough, but like I'm we getting stumped after four squares. <laughs> because the and the teams are not easy. Like I don't know Pacers history. Like what are we yeah. talking about? The Jazz. All right, let me try to think of the Jazz. Who do they have? They have Mitchell McConnell. Oh, the only one we have left for Jazz is Dunk heat. Contest. Yeah, the heat, heat in the Dunk Contest, yeah. Hmm. Let me try to think of the Heat. This is tough. Carl Malone. Nah, none of those. Bro, this is crazy. It's tough. This bro. is, bro, this is ridiculous, bro. It's tough. There's got to be somebody so obvious for this Heat Dallas one that's like, are we just not thinking of? It has, it's going to be a role player. It's going to be like. Yeah. One of the Charmers, Norland's, Nor, not Norland, what's his name? Norris Cole. Yeah. Mike um, Mike Miller, no. Sean Battier, no. He ain't never played for the Mavericks. <laughs> Yo, bro, you gotta be kidding me. James Jones, did he play for the? Am I bugging? Yeah, he never wanted to ever play for the Mavericks. Oh my God, what is? It's this? gonna be somebody so obvious. Uh, I wish there was like a hint button, like you could get one for free or something. One like. of them, just one of them, bro. That's tough. It's tough. Chris Anderson? Birdman? No, I never played for Mavericks, I don't think. Oh, you got to be kidding me. All right, we got, hold on. Let's pivot real quick. Let's pivot real quick. Somebody that played for the Jazz that was in the slam dunk contest at some point. I really don't I think Rudy Gay was ever in the dunk contest. Nah, nah, nah. I swear. But somebody. If he was, that was a good pull. I'm about to just try it. Might as well at this point. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. All right. We got. We got. We got that knocked out. All right. We got the dunk contest out the way. How do we right. get that one first? We yeah, I have no idea. All, all rookie second team too. Somebody that has played for the because they, they had to have played for the Pacers at some point in their career, but also is all rookie second team. The second team part is what's making it mad hard. What about, well, I think Ron Artest was all rookie second team. He's all defensive team. He was hooping as a rookie. Did um, Steven Jackson play for the Mavericks? I don't think so. Jermaine O'Neal. I don't think he played for the Mavericks. Danny Granger. Nope. He didn't play for none of them teams. Uh, this is gosh. tough. Bro, this is so hard, bro. This is tough. We might have to, might have to call a lifeline. Yeah, <laughs> we might have to, have to, might have to phone a friend, bro. We might have to phone a friend. This is tough. Let me see. So, let me see something. Miami Heat, Dallas Mavericks. Pacers, Mavericks, like these are tough. 
I got to see something. I got to see something. I'm going, I'm going to get one answer. <laughs> we need a lifeline. <laughs> oh, my gosh. See, this is what I'm talking about. As soon as I see them, I'm like, how do we not think of this dude, bro? <laughs> Kelly Olenek. I'm dead. Bro cost right. the Cavs a championship. OD. OD. Yeah. All right. I'm the Mavericks Heat. Maverick, bro, I'm telling you, Mavericks Heat cannot somebody, be this hard. It cannot so be this hard. Obvious, bro. It cannot be this hard. We, we got to just think about all the Mavericks teams. Yeah. So, like, obviously, anyone that played right now, no. Mm-hmm. Right? Nah. Nah, I don't think so. Didn't we? Or even, like, these past couple years. Nah. Can't be. Dirk era. I just named pretty much everybody that we know in like when Dirk was playing. Yeah. Michael Finley and Karan Butler are the two that feel like they could be right, but I really don't know for a hundred percent. My guess my best guess would be Michael Finley. Okay, I'm about to we about to just send it and see. Oh. Oh. oh this is tough, bro. That was a gut punch right there, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's tough. Tyler Hands, bro. Who he play for? He played for. I know he played for the Pacers. I don't think he ever played for nah. the Mavericks. Why um, is this so hard, man? This is, bro, and I'm like, this is only like every day nine of them doing this. Like, this is about to get crazy. There's gonna be a day where it's gonna be just like wild ones, slam dunk, three point contest, right. seven foot and over, 50, 40, 90, shot right. 40. Yeah, like a whole bunch of crazy stuff. It's gonna be something crazy. All right, we have three left. We gotta finish this and wrap up the episode. <laughs> um, dang, this is tough, bro. I, ge- I genuinely, bro, I'm just, I can't, or I can't think of nobody. I can't, I genuinely can't think of nobody. Like, I thought, bro, I, I'm thinking of all the Pacers teams that I know. I'm thinking of all the Mavericks teams. Bro, my, honestly, my brain has no memory of any Mavericks team before 2000. Yeah, it ain't a lot of them. It's like Mark Aguirre, Artis Gilmore, uh, Rolando Blackman, and it's like, yeah, a bunch of guys. <laughs> so I'm saying, like, bro, I don't, like, I have no memory. I'm bro, about to start just looking up teams and just. Yeah, I'm about to pull for one more. Oh my gosh. I'll turn her. Wait, what? Oh, in the. <laughs> Damn. All right. Um. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, this one is sick. This Wait, Jerry Stackhouse? For didn't he play for the Heat too? Or am I bugging? Find out. Oh, what a pull! What a oh pull. yeah! Oh what yeah! All right, bet, 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 bet. What now we just that? need Pacers, Mavericks. I'm about to. You ready? Yeah. This one is so stupid. I can't believe this one didn't come. I like. He. I never. I. You. I would never think of him really for either of these teams, but. Oh my god, bro! What? I think Monte Ellis. I think what? Warriors. I think Bucks. Do not yeah. think that much, For, bro. Also, Jerry Stackhouse. That's a crazy pull. You 1%? see the percentage? You see the percentage? Come that's on, bro. That's, that's a, a wild pull. pull. That is a good. Pull. That is a wild pull, bro. I feel like Monte Ellis might be a low percentage too, because that would not be the first one to come to mind. It's taking forever to load too. Yeah, I'm also, Rudy Gay go, was a crazy pull too, three point two percent. Yeah, let me go and look at their replies and see what other people were putting in for that spot. Oh, Monte, Monte was thirty percent. Okay, Doug McDermott. Oh my gosh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm dead. Okay, what were people putting for the Mavericks and Heat spot? Josh Richardson. Um, okay, Antoine Walker. I see. <laughs> Bro, did you know Jay Crowder was on the Mavericks? I don't remember that. <laughs> when, when was he ever on the Mavericks? Apparently, bro. Hassan Whiteside for the Heat and Jazz. Oh, my gosh. He was on the Jazz. Bro, oh, saw, every time I see so other hard. people's answers, I'm like, bro, that's so obvious. It's like I, my brain can't. can't in the, in the, when you're actually doing it, it's mad hard to think on a spot like that, bro. Yeah. 
Justin Holiday for for Pacers and Mavericks. Um, I'm seeing a lot of Monte Ellis. I'm seeing some guys who I've never I don't even know these names. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at like 0.01 percent. <laughs> oh my gosh, Karan Butler did play for the Mavericks. Uh, bro, I, like I, I'm sorry, bro. Karan Butler and Michael Finley, like those names, just like they just sound right for that spot. They yeah. just sound like yeah. they would be on both of those teams. Mm. Darren Collinson also played for the Pacers and the Mavericks. I should have got did, that one. Bro, why is it? Damn. This is crazy, bro. I should have got that one. Dang. Dang. That's These tough. are fun, though. These are fun, though. And they put nice. them out daily. So if y'all haven't checked out NBA Crossover, definitely go check them out. 100%. Um, it's definitely a quality, quality, quality. Um, but with that, that is going to do it for this episode of the Off the Glass podcast. I can't believe the next episode is going to be the 20th episode, bro. We That's are crazy. into it. We're pushing yeah, them out. So we are. We are. So if you made it this far in the episode, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you are on YouTube, if you're on audio platforms, go over to YouTube and subscribe and like the video. Drop a comment. Let us know that you made it through the whole episode. We appreciate you. As, as always, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead, pull out your phone, go to Apple Podcasts, go to Spotify, drop a five-star review. It helps the pod out a ton. Follow the socials that you see below. Like I said, now we're grinding for 250 followers on the, the IG, going for 500. Road to 1,000 is underway, <laughs> 10% <laughs> in. So, as always, we appreciate the support. Um, next episode is going to be episode 20. Um, going to have some more Summer League to talk about. Whenever Dame does get traded, that's going to be a lot to talk about. Whenever Harding gets traded, it's going to be a lot to talk about. So, we're at an exciting, exciting spot in the off season, and then before you know it, we'll be doing, uh, you know, full regular season previews, get some rankings out um, for the East and the West. So, exciting stuff ahead for the Off the Glass podcast. As always, we appreciate you for listening, um, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.